Okay, now we're going to show you how to install uh, points and condenser on the Onan B series engines. You're going to need a 730 seconds hex Allen bit. You can do a socket or an Allen wrench or a T handle and a 316th. Grab a Phillips and a straight screwdriver and some kind of pry bar to bar over the flywheel. So since we've got this motor apart because we're doing a full service on it, the heads are off it. This makes the job a lot easier finding top dead center. So you want top dead center on the uh, compression stroke. So rotate your engine the direction that it, it spins, which viewed from the front on this model is a clockwise. Right now we've got the intake stroke, the intake valves open. All right, now we're on compression stroke, intake valves closed, pistons coming up. Hopefully you can see this. Here's the piston coming up. And you want to get one that's flush at the top of the block. That's top dead center right there. Both valves are closed, that's what you want. Top dead center, doesn't matter what cylinder, you just need to be on one of them. You can see in here. So where I'm barring, barring the flywheel over. If you've got your heads on, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, you can find, you make sure you're in your intake stroke, pull the valve cover off, watch the intake valve open up. Take your spark plug out, you can put a piece of electrical wire down in the spark plug hole. Nothing too thick, probably 14 gauge, 16 gauge. Bar the engine over on the uh, compression stroke and you'll feel the piston slightly push on that wire and get it to the point where you can't pull that wire up by hand and that means you're at top dead center. That's another way to do it. Also a lot of guys don't worry about top dead center and here's your points box. You want to take the screw off here. Take the points cover off, set it aside. And down in here is your points and then in here is the gap. It's probably going to be hard to see. But the guys say when this is opened all the way up, it's on the part of the cam where you want to be. And you set your points when they're at their widest opening. And that works. It works fine. I like getting them at top dead center and you know, you know everything's just where it should be and that's how they recommend doing it. So this is the gap in here that you set. Okay, so first... We start by taking the condenser out, which is this little screw right here. It's important this screw is tight, but not necessarily that tight. This condenser has to be mounted and grounded, otherwise it will not function. So this is just flopping around in here. Going to give you all kinds of ignition trouble. You don't want to lose this little screw either. So take your screw and set it aside somewhere where you won't lose it. Inside the box works fine. And then there's a a uh, screw here that's on the points where the wire coming from the coil goes to and also the condenser wire goes to right here and unscrew that take your condenser and the wire off you don't want to inspect your wire make sure there's no breaks anywhere from one end to the other going to the coil if there is or any exposed wire replace it that'll give you all kinds of problems and uh we recommend obviously replacing the condenser every time you do this in the points. And the condenser has probably got to get replaced more so than the points. The condenser is very important to use an OEM condenser, an ONN condenser. The China import ones have given us all kinds of problems. Uh, just They just don't work. The OEM part points are much better quality, but you can get by with the Chinese points. Uh, I'll tell you what to look for, but um, condenser is very important to go OEM. If you can do both OEM, you're better off. They last an awful long time. Now to get to the points, there's two Allen head screws in here. You can see they're 3 16 It shouldn't be super tight. Okay, take the points off and get your two screws. These are Repco points. You can't get them anymore, but they're great points. 
it's what OEM used to be when you're looking at points that aren't OEM or even check the OEM ones out nowadays make sure that this flat strap band here has clearance between the bottom of the points because if it's touching it'll ground out and the points won't work we've seen some of the import ones come real close to hitting here and actually hit here and once this spring metal fatigues especially if it's cheap import metal it's going to get a bigger bow in it plenty of gap here so that's the important part if it's close to touching the points aren't going to work the rest of the import points seem to hold up halfway decent uh, if you got a good set of repcos in in your machine like this and the points aren't in bad shape you look in here it'll be hard to see in the camera but you make sure they're not pitted both sides and these ones aren't but they're definitely dirty if they're not pitted bad you can take a small points file or file or some sandpaper emery cloth and clean these contacts up and regap the points and they'll last forever but we're going to replace them right here is the point base and there's the plunger right here and this is what actuates your points these actually do wear the wear in length and they'll also wear around the barrel and then they won't work right if the length is off then your points are going to be uh, incorrectly gapped or timed and you've got to retime them or regap them to compensate depending on how short your, your your length is if this is really worn then you need to replace it I think the uh, spec is just under an inch with a micrometer or a, a caliper that, that it's tolerable your point space you want to inspect this make sure everything looks good and you have to make sure you have a gasket here I don't know if you can see that but there's a gasket and this gasket needs to be an OEM gasket because the height thickness of it is very uh, important as that also changes your points gap and timing if you put a thick gasket in there it's gonna gonna lift your points up further away from that plunger and if it's too short then it's gonna put it closer I don't know if you can see down in there but there is your your camshaft in the lobes so this gasket looks good we're not gonna mess with it uh, just a little bit of cleaning on this and this looks good we'll, we'll check that shaft to make sure it's in or the uh, plunger and make sure it's in spec and uh, put it back in if it is or replace it if it's not so I'll just clean the bottom of this off where it mounts to the gasket definitely don't want any sealant there there's no need there's very little oil coming up here in pressure it's just getting slung on from the the cam lobe you shouldn't have much oil up in your points if you do there's an issue there's actually probably a little bit more in this one than I'd like to see so we'll keep an eye on it that could be from a bad gasket could be from a worn a worn uh, pin but the pin looks good and gasket looks good could be from too thin thin of oil also so this is all good and again this is a direct path to your engine so don't get any garbage in there and then this sits down in here and then that part you're, you're inspected is good so the plunger checks out good clean them up and we just put a little dab of oil on them and stick that guy back in the hole alright alright here again we're talking about OEM own end parts Cummins now owns Onam, Cummins diesel engines. And make sure it's good and clean. Inspect your gap here. The OEM ones should be fine, but you never know. Alright. Get your old screws back out. These got a little lock washer on them. That's got to be in there. Get these in there and get them started. They don't need to go all the way tight yet, but just get them so they're holding the points in. You'll feel a little resistance because that plunger's on there. Again, make sure your lock washer's on there. Make sure the threads are clean, the bolts are clean. These ones are fine. 
get this one down just so you get some resistance all right if you got too much resistance take your other allen wrench this is your adjuster just back that off a little bit and then tighten the points down so you're not fighting that you don't need to go too crazy you don't want to snap these but get them good and tight so they make good ground and contact all right here you'll see there's a piece of paper in here you want to remove that paper and then you can take whatever you want a business cards people use burglar paper whatever you want but get these tightened up this is turning them if you can hopefully see it's closing this gap in here you want to get them to touch to do this next step all right so you'll notice when you get this new set of points here there's a little piece of paper in here just open the points up pull that piece of paper out open them up with your hand a little bit spray a little electrical contact cleaner or carb cleaner whatever you want in there take a piece of paper these tags work really good just to clean these up they've got a little coating on there to keep them protected that's all you got to do a couple times in between the paper and the contact cleaner you're going to be good to go So after you get these installed, now it's time to gap them. You're going to need your 5 30 seconds wrench. The adjusting screw is right here. And you tighten them. It brings the gap closer. You loosen them. It brings the gap farther away. To gap them, you need a feeler gauge. And you're going to need a 21 thousandths feeler gauge if you can get one or have one. This one will work. So again, you want to make sure you're top dead center on one of your one of your pistons, one of your cylinders. And hopefully, you can see this gap in here. That's the gap you want to set at 20. So if you're tight, you're actually going to push the points apart, and you don't want to push it apart. You want it just to go in there and drag slightly. If you can see that or not, it's slightly slightly too close right now so open it up a little bit by turning the screw left it's pretty close we'll just back it off a little bit more it still drags slightly but it's not opening the points up and we don't get too picky on this section because we actually time the engine the correct way we're going to time it statically or, or with the timing gun and we'll show you how to do it both ways uh you time it statically with a test light if you don't have a test light or a timing gun this will definitely get you close enough in the ballpark. Um, the other reason we time it the other way is things wear over time. Your, your engine's wearing over time. There's play, there's slop. The cam's worn down. That plunger's worn down. All points aren't, aren't the same. So if you time it statically, then the engine's actually getting timed uh, the way it should be instead of just by a rough gap here. And you can be off a little bit either way with these. And uh, it's really kind of hard to, hard to be exact. But this engine will start it'll probably run fine you can get by and do it this way just fine and uh, when we time them statically or with a timing gun we advance them slightly they seem some seem to run a little better especially this newer gasoline if you advance them too much they're going to run too hot they're going to uh, a little hard time starting when they're hot so stay within the factory specs uh, when i say we advance them slightly the book calls for 21 degrees for firing before top dead center we might go to 23-ish, 24-ish, uh, just kind of do some of them by, by ear. You can have the engine running and adjust it right here. And uh, that's how you adjust the timing and you can hear it. So it, it's the gap of the points that times the engine uh, ignition, but you don't have to have the engine uh, shut off to adjust it. You can do it right here while it's running. So that's that part. Now... The next part is can be a little tricky, not too bad, but a little bit. And uh, that's installing the condenser. And I'll, I'll show you why here in a second. Again, the condenser needs to be genuine Cummins own imports. Uh, very important because the, the import condensers just do not last. And bad condensers can give you all kinds of finicky problems from starting to running. 
and uh, back condenser can have all kinds of different symptoms uh, make you think it's a carburetor make you think it's an intake leak but if you got problems with the engine running and just kind of started doing it we tell everybody to jump right to the condenser it's kind of the easiest way to to, to get rid of uh, things to troubleshoot and uh, fairly inexpensive all right so we got our screw here on the points you want to back this off a little bit these are just threaded into plastic so you kind of got to be careful with with how far you tighten them up and pull them out you're gonna have your wire here for the coil needs to go onto the screw this is where it can get a little tricky all right and then the wire for the condenser needs to go on the screw so the one for the coil we usually bring in from the bottom the one for the condenser we usually try to slide in from the top um, sometimes you can get a flathead screwdriver and a push on this metal strap and if you push on this metal strap sometimes you can get yourself just enough space in here but usually they want to push one another out it just gets tricky but you'll get it you got to make sure your screws backed out enough that you have the clearance for the two of them to, to both go in there there we go if you saw that or not but there we go and then just make sure these are staying in place as you're screwing them get them tight just snug them up you don't have to go too crazy because you'll strip those plastic threads out it's tight enough that they don't come loose and you have good contact this wire from the coil has got a notch in the base of this points bracket here that goes in there like that all right here's your next important part is that this condenser sits in here there's a little nub down in here i'm not sure if you can see it that the base of the condenser sits against put your screw in here then it gets installed on this hole that's closer to the firewall the threads are going to be the same but this is the one you want not the countersunk one again you're going into aluminum with a steel screw so be careful you don't want to strip the threads out set this back up against that nub if you can see it that's where it'll be positioned correctly this needs to be on there pretty tight to make good ground otherwise this condenser won't function all right we're bottomed out there just give it a little tug a little turn then this wire we just take this and bend it over here and then you're going to tuck your wire out of the way of that screw and then you're going to reinstall your points cover on here if you're going to not time it if you're going to time it then you leave your points cover off but tuck all these wires up out of the way find the threads with them, and then tighten that screw and sometimes this can be tricky it's got to kind of go in that countersunk bowl and the threads will find their way in. Uh, we'll show you how to time it next.